Hello everybody, it's the Pollinator. It's the second video of the day, but this one is, uh, well, I'm gonna follow the instructions <laughs> that it says here for the video, but I was in a group and this man is gonna be putting together um, a video of what being able to transition has meant to us. And he's just gonna take clips out of different people's videos and put a big one together um but i wanted to make some a video about what he said or what he is asking of us now the wording he used i can't really agree with because nobody made me able let me take that back yeah a lot of people who fought for transgender rights allowed us to be able to step off into this um, and get HRT. Um, and, uh, and for that, I'm extremely grateful that we have access to that. And I, but me having the kind of access that I have was me joining the military. So, but activists, transgender activists and advocates were the ones to lean on the VA to uh, make that stuff available for veterans. So, but what it means to me to live my authentic self is invaluable and priceless. All of my life I've been out of step with who I really am and didn't understand what was going on. Um, I didn't have a word for it. I did not know. The first time I even became aware that transgender men existed, or, or women, I didn't know either one existed, was in um, 2012. I was living in Texas at the time, and I was watching Dancing with the Stars, which isn't something I really liked to watch. I just happened to be watching that because I didn't have cable. I had... Um, Actually, yes, I did. That year, I did have cable. But for a long time, all I had was them freaking rabbit ears. And then I had a, a digital, a little digital thing that I could tune into that brought in like 10 channels. Um, then I got my cable back when I got my disability. So, so I didn't even know um, we existed until that show when I saw Chaz Bono on that show. And I was like, I was stunned. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And I just sat there and listened to his story. You know, he, the, the, the dancers, the dancers and the people that they're training, teaching to dance, you know, the, the people they're teaching tell their stories. Um, and I was fascinated by his story to where it started jogging my memory. And I could not stop watching that show. I mean, I made it a point. I, I kept saying, first of all, I said, oh my God, he needs to he needs to uh, cut them cypress. These cypress were really freaking bushy. I remember that. And then I remember thinking he was going to drop that woman he was dancing with because he was not strong. He was not fit. He needed to lose some weight. And I thought he was going to drop her. So I kept watching that and and I wanted him to stay on the show I knew he wasn't going to be able to stay very long because he just wasn't you know the best dancer but um I wanted to hear more I wanted to know more but at the time I didn't want to um know any more than what I heard him say and it wasn't until I moved where I am now that I start to research what a transgender person was up to that point, I just knew what I knew of his story. I didn't know anybody else's story. So, I reached out to him to thank him for shining a light in a very dark spot in my life. I did not know. And after I finished being afraid of this, <laughs> And embraced it and stopped fighting it. 
I see so many people fighting it too. I, I, I attract a lot of people um, from this channel, from social media, who thinking about it. And a lot of them fight it, you know, for years. Some of them, wow, some of them have fought it. I knew one person who fought it for, had been fighting it for 20 years or more. I can't fight nothing that long. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I had to come to some kind of realization of what was going on long before 20. Ooh, I can't imagine being, knowing something is going on and not doing anything about it for 20 freaking years out of fear. So all of these pioneers and people before me yes looking at them talking with them i got very involved in the community at first a lot of different pieces of community because i've never been one i've never been a joiner so my i stick my life in a lot of different places i'm not in one particular area of the community i'm not even really i'm a black man who happens to be transgender I don't like what's going on in the LGBT. I don't like all the racism I'm seeing going on there, just as prevalent as any other part of society. I don't like the some of the scenes that are going on. But one thing is for sure, is this is the best thing that ever happened to me, and it's the worst thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I started this um, post-menopause. A lot of trans men and transgender people are able to catch this long before that happens to them. And that ain't no cakewalk either, folks. But better late than never, as far as I'm concerned. I'm glad that I stopped fighting it because it was driving me kind of crazy that I was fighting it. Um, and it allowed me to step into myself um, in a way I never had before. And to realize that I wasn't crazy all of my life. I was just a trans man who didn't know he was a trans man until he knew he was a trans man. <laughs> Even in the beginning, I didn't realize what was gonna happen along the way. I have no idea how much I was gonna change. I know I uh, wanted hair on my face really bad and not because I wanted to fake people out into thinking I was a man. I am a man. But merely for the misgendering factor. I absolutely can't tolerate that anymore. Um, you know, if people get it wrong once or maybe even twice, I may be forgiving of it. But if they do it on a continual basis, I, I will put them out of my life. I will. Um, that's disrespectful to keep doing that. And it just... It gave me freedom, a, a sense of freedom that I didn't have before. Now, I won't be all the way free until my people, my black peoples are free. But it still allowed me to um, have a heck of a lot more freedom in expression than I had when I was fighting it and hiding it. But I wasn't hiding, you know, I came out um, thinking I was a lesbian when I was 17 years old. So I have never been one to want to live my life in the closet. They call it stealth, I call it closet. It's the same damn thing. They just change the words every 10 years about something. I always changing words. And then there's about these gazillion freaking acronyms in the LG. It's LGBTQ and about 20 other, 20, 25 other acronyms to that thing. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want to be splintered off like that. Not in my pe not in my being. Um, so this, even though a lot of my family doesn't understand it, they don't know much about it. Um, you know, I teach when I can, but mostly I support a lot of other transgender people without really talking about this transition in that sense. I talk about who they are as people. You know how what. Their happy level um, has to do with them, not their their gender or their sexuality. It has to do with how much knowledge of self that they have. And boy, did this give me a heck of a lot more knowledge of myself than I had uh, 
when I was 58 years old. I'm now 61. So it's been, it really has been a blessing to me, even though the world just can't stand our asses. <laughs> I I saw one guy who who's very, I don't know if I can call this guy bright or if he just latched on to something that he had access to in the universe. But he literally thinks that, you know, if you're if you're trans and you want to have surgery on your body to match what's going on in our brain, our brain wave, our brain brain wave patterns are that of the gender we were not born as. That has been studied. That is scientific fact. People may not want to acknowledge that, but it is. It is so. I can't remember who the first person. It was actually a. a, a an actress that put that information out there. I have the mem on my computer um, that it has been scientifically studied. But, so, ooh, I lost that train of thought. Anyway, I hope the gentlemen that um, have asked us to make this uh, post, I guess it must be for some kind of trans, trans awareness, something or another. I hope that this fulfills what you were looking for and that you'll be able to take pieces of this out for your for your uh, video. But guess what, folks? We will not be erased. We will not go silently into the night. I won't. I'm not stealth. There are places that I go where I don't disclose what I am, but that's my choice. Nobody else's. I may ask people, you know, you know trans one-on-one, -on -one, you don't out people. You don't know what, who is around that could hear that information and hurt them. So it's not a good idea for people to gossip about that, to tell other people about that that they may or may not know. It is just not cool to, to blow the whistle on somebody else's sexuality or gender. It can get them killed. So, so we are not going to be erased, though, not by this administration. I don't even see really what people are afraid of. They can't make us not be who we are. We're going to be this way whether we have access to health care or not. We're going to be who we are. Um, it'll be extremely uncomfortable and tough um, to revert back if that happens. But, hey, let's just make sure you vote. If you don't vote, you're letting other people make these decisions for you. That is why the asshole is in office. It's because everybody who thought their vote didn't matter didn't vote and let the Electoral College work in a few states. And that's how the idiot got elected. He did not win the popular vote. We're the only country in the world, I think, that has something like this where uh, electorates can override the popular vote. He would have never got in office. We would have had to deal with another headache called Clinton. But still, it would have been the better of two evils. <laughs> and we not had this particular character who woke up the racism in this world, uh, in this country. And he broke that crap wide open. And it's awful right now for, for black people. Um, less so for um, Hispanics. Even less so for Asians. Even very, very, very less so for Jewish people. They identify as white folks. Come on now. They're not. There may be anti-Semitism going on in this country, but those people own this country. They do very, very well in the United States. So by not any stretch of the imagination are those people being oppressed here. They were oppressed, oppressed years, decades ago during World War II. Um, in Germany, so, but they're not that they're not in that position today. Even though there's a lot of hubbub about um, the killings at that at the mosque, or what they at the synagogue, um, that does not happen very often because they do own banks and Hollywood and a lot of things in this country. They're not economically oppressed like black people are. We're on the bottom run. So, so anyway. Done with this particular video. We will not be erased. We are going to become as loud as they're becoming about trying to squash us. 
transgender people in this nation. Ain't gonna happen out on my watch. This is the veteran, the pollinator.